Yeah, I mean, a big one of the big problems is flooding prevents a lot of things. I mean, we have a stadium that we get national attention every time this thing floods. So it it automatically limits you. And there's literally we've tried. There's no way to prevent the flooding. It's in the floodplain. You can't you can't stop it. So in 2013, when we got the lease, first thing we did was really go through the ballpark and see what we had. Um, we had done some of that beforehand, but it's almost like buying a house. It happens so quick before you know it, you're in the house. Oh God, what do you do? Uh, so we were, we started walking the ballpark and just realized quickly that there were a lot of seats, but that was really it. I mean, just basic bleacher seats. Um, some weird things in the ballpark. Some of the bleacher seats were closer than the box seats when normally your box seats are your front seats. So it, it just it was just a little goofy. And what we we realized was there was a, the ability to host a lot of people and pack them in, but it wasn't a great fan experience. You couldn't go to the game and interact and have fun with your with other people. You were single file, lined up, kind of crammed in like sardines. And we just realized that, that that's not how fans want to experience the game. It's not how I would want to go to the game. People want to go to the game and be with their friends and family. So we knew we had to fix that. So when we started um, looking at the stadium and, and what we wanted to do with it and how we wanted to change it, um, we really focused on who's coming to the ballpark, what are the different groups of people that are coming out, and we narrowed it down to kind of three different areas. We've got our, our local community partners as far as the corporate businesses, um, we have our nonprofit groups, our churches, our little leagues, and then we have families in town that just want to come out, um, you know, be together at a baseball game. So when we started looking at how we could improve the, the ballpark in order to improve the fan experience, um, we looked at those three people groups and said, okay, what do we do to, to fit their needs? So obviously not being funded by major league teams and trying to figure out how to do this, starting our own, our own you know, team for the first time, we didn't have big budgets. So it's like, how can we do this smart and how can we do this over probably years? So one of the first things we did was uh, we tore out the uh, behind home plate. There were these just basic bench seats on the original grandstand and added these home plate club tables. Uh, you'd seen them at other ballparks. Uh, they're really four top tables where you could basically have uh, a, a great experience where you sit at a table and interact with your, with your, fa your, your friends. So um, we, we ordered seats from Camden Yards. Uh, they were ripping them out of the stadium, replacing them. We got some cool uh, Camden Yard seats. We added this really cool custom base. And before you know it, we had these 10 four top tables. We didn't know if anyone would buy them. We didn't know if, if they were worth it, uh, but we created them. We created, created all inclusive food and we sold out of them. And so we went, wow, this is great. People like this, let's do it again. Added another row, added another row. Before you know it, now we have 40 tables. Our entire backstop uh, area behind home plate is now the home plate club, and it's, it's one of our most popular areas. So, yeah, we started with the home plate club. Um, we went down our left field deck. There was just a little covered awning. We said, wow, this is a really cool area. Um, you know, the, the group area where you could bring in people, companies could bring, come together, host their events, interact, have all-inclusive food. And so our bear trap was really formed where we started adding onto a deck, um, creating levels where people could interact and companies could be in there, fans could have fun. So, um, so our bear trap was really, was really next. And, and the other thing that I was, I was, I, I scared the hell out of them, I'll tell you this, because 
you know, at first, you know, we're a small business. We didn't have a lot of money, right? Like, again, we, you know, we're coming in and coming out and we're trying to hire staff and grow. And year two, though, I, I, you know, we didn't have our left field area was nothing. It was that 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 awning deck out there and then just picnic tables. And, you know, we had a lot of feedback like, hey, guys, cool thought, but just can't see the game, you know. And I was the one who was like, Brian, we we have to build a deck. And, you know, like you have to imagine, I mean, back then, the idea of spending $10,000 was scary. The idea of spending, I think the deck ended up being almost a quarter of a million dollars, like Jeez. horrifying, you know. And so I – I was just so adamant about it, and 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 we got things traded out. I mean, like that deck was built by I don't know how it got built. <laughs> I really, I mean, it was down to the last freaking day, Dean, that it got done, and the the city and we got you know, our 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 sponsor like traded a lot of the labor for it. I mean, it was nuts, but it got done, and that I think has been a huge piece of continuing to attract group outings and summer picnics and people at the park. So, so then another thing we decided is we ha still had a lot of seats in the grandstand and the bleachers. And so like, again, those are single file packed in sardine seats. And so uh, what we, we found was there was a local movie theater that had these really cool drink rails that they added. They took out seats, but they gave you a great seat and added a food drink rail. Well, we didn't have a single cup holder in the ballpark, and we were giving people all-inclusive food, but nowhere to put your soda or your, your food. So we wanted to fix that. So we tore out every other row of seats, added these really cool drink rails in front of every seat, and now created a better experience for people, gave them more room. Now they have a place to put their food down, um, and just made the experience better. When you come to the game, you, you're going to have a much better time. So uh, that was a, a big addition. So the video board really came out of a necessity. We, we had a, a scoreboard that stopped working. When we called to fix it, the Dactronics people literally laughed at me and said, I, we don't even make that thing part for that anymore. So we quickly realized, hey, we got to get something that, you know, we got to replace this thing. Uh, and so again, City of Kalamazoo uh, being our top partner, we said, hey, we got to figure out a way to do this and make the fan experience better. We need a video board. So, um, so, so we started going through the planning. It's a big budget. It's a big process. And, uh, and throughout that, we really decided early on that we, while most teams were taking their video board and using it just to sell ads, to put signs, I mean, go look at these video boards. There's banners all around it throughout the game. It's just ads, ads, ads. It's, it's literally doesn't do anything. It literally takes away from the fan experience. So we decided early on we weren't going to do that. Um, this was going to be to make the experience better for the fans at the game. So we took every inch that we could and made it a giant TV. There's not a single ad that wraps around that video board. It's a giant screen. Um, we do put sponsors and community partners on there, but it's there to entertain fans. It's not there to sell ads, which is, is very unique and special. And when you come to the game now, we're, we're doing goofy things on the video board. We're uh, shooting live video that brings the game to life. We're doing the promotions you're going to see on there. So um, it's elevated the experience. And, and Eaton, we couldn't have done it without you know, the city of Kalamazoo. Eaton, who uh, is the sponsor of the video board, and, uh, and, and the growlers making that happen. So again, looking at our, our food and beverage facilities and, and what was here when we started, it was one concession building underneath the first base grandstand and one tiny little concession building uh, out in left field. And that was it. And you're supposed to feed 6,000 people you know, out of these two little outlets. So we took a lot of time to develop unique and creative ways to create outlets for more people. Um, so a lot of the all-inclusive areas are, you know, under grandstands or behind grandstands. Um, we've had areas that were, you know, not used for anything or were just grass or just pieces of turf laid out um, that we, you know, renovated, put down concrete slabs, uh, were able to create portable and temporary food outlets for people uh, to come and, and enjoy our facility without having to stand in line for a hot dog or, you know, without going to one of the two concession windows that we have. Um, the other thing too is, is portable units. Um, you know, we've got food trucks and, and 
beverage trailers and different things that we can move around in order to expedite um, you know, being able to get those different food items that you do want. Um, and when we do flood, we can always get all that stuff out to higher grounds as well, which is a benefit for sure. Yeah, I mean, a big one of the big problems is flooding prevents a lot of things. I mean, we have a stadium that we get national attention every time this thing floods. So it it automatically limits you. And there's literally we've tried. There's no way to prevent the flooding. It's in the floodplain. You can't you can't stop it. Uh, the river makes a sharp right uh, 90 degree turn right behind our stadium, uh, and so when that river does come up, it it fills our stadium full of water, you know, as it's flowing through. Um, and so we, we have developed a lot of processes as far as what we do to keep track of that river level. Um, so we know when the water's gonna start coming into the stadium, but once it starts coming in, it, it's coming, you know, really fast. Um, and so there's not always a ton of time to, you know, slowly get everything out and prepare. So it, it is wild, it, it creates times where we're trudging through the, the stadium up to our waist in river. Um, you know, it causes a lot of havoc to the field, to our kitchen facilities, to our equipment that's in the ballpark. Um, so the first thing we do is try to get a lot of that stuff up into higher areas. Um, so whether it's our, our food equipment inside our kitchens or it's our beer trailers or our, our food trucks, um, our smokers, all those different things, we wheel up into to higher areas of the park. Um, we have to seal off all our concession buildings in order to try to prevent um, as much water from coming through as possible. Um, and then our, our food and, and drinks and anything we have on hand, the vast majority of it is not savable. So we have to, you know, power gets shut off and refrigerators are turned off. So it's really a, a financial burden on that end too because we have this huge investment of food and drinks ready to go and then you know it's all gone and we have to repurchase it all so it makes it extremely difficult um, but then it does give us an opportunity to get creative with how we we move things around and what kind of equipment we're going to purchase knowing that eventually it's going to get moved um, we get to work with some really awesome businesses and, and companies in the area that help us do flood restoration and uh, you know clean out our concession stands and our team shop after uh, flooding and stuff happens too. So um, it does, it creates a lot of challenges, but it makes us be more creative uh, and more forward thinking when it comes to purchases and different things that we want to add to the ballpark. The, the real challenge is trying to take the ballpark that we have and working around that, you know, sure, if you had unlimited budgets, let's rip this thing down and build it on a mountain and get, a ri get rid of the flooding and go from there. But it's, it's just the challenge of doing that but what's great is that with that challenge sure you could just rip this thing out and build a cookie cutter ballpark that a hundred other cities have but what we have been able to do and what's happened is we have all these unique things that are very unique to our ballpark that make it special when you come here so i do i think the challenge with that makes it better and gives us a story that when you every area you have that you sit in there's a there's a unique story for each one So one of the things we do when we sit down in our planning every year is we go and we try to walk through the entire experience that a fan goes through from parking your car to the restrooms and beyond. And so, so we literally go to games, experience it ourselves and just kind of map that out. And so what, we, what we've done is throughout the years we go, how do we make that better? How do we make it unique? How do we make it one of a kind, just like the stadium? Um, and be, with that, it's created some really off the wall things. Our men's urinals. When you go into the men's urinals, we have bears that growl at you when you're in the urinals. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, but we have little kids running out of the urinals saying, Dad, Dad, come here, you gotta go pee. Come look at this thing. Oh my God. So the men's urinals experience is different. Um, we, we just, uh, this past off season, had a, we found a local person that carves wooden bears and does bear car does carvings of all nature that is nationally known in our backyard and we said hey can you get us a big crazy bear so fans can take a photo so he created a three ton giant bear that's now in the ballpark the biggest one he's ever done um 
And then, and then really our most iconic and kind of most off the wall thing we've ever done is our hockey dasher boards behind home plate. Uh, one of the things we found was that our ballpark was built uh, a long time ago, wasn't necessarily designed for accessibility, for handicap accessibility. And so uh, we needed to fix that. I think we had close to 15 to 20 dedicated accessible seats in the ballpark, which was, was embarrassing, which is not, not good enough. So we worked with the North League Foundation, the city of Kalamazoo, and put the first and only hockey dasher boards on a baseball field. Whether that's good, and bad, or good or bad, we're the only one that has that. And so what has happened now, it's opened behind home plate now, is this amazing uh, view, whether you're walking by or sitting, it's totally opened up that area. It's added over 120 accessible seats in our best area, best experience. So, um, and it's iconic. It's the only one, it, it just stands out. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's just, it's again, every one of those decisions has been, how did we make the experience better for, for the fans coming to the games?